is he that's within us than he that's in the world. Amen. He's a wonderful God. Amen. Amen. All right. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer? If you've got a need, if you let it be known by just raising your hand, God sees every hand, every need and situation. Let's just praise him and thank him for what he's done and doing and going to do. Amen? Amen? All right. Father, we love you today. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing to overshadow you.
page 
It was not live. It was a recording. And, uh, but uh, it's something I hadn't heard before, and which there's a lot that I hadn't. But I just began to just love the Lord and just bask in His presence. And I just, uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't work. Amen. It just flowed. It just flowed. And I'll tell you what, we'll magnify Him. And love him, it's because we realize we're in his presence. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to come to you at this time this morning for the. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do things a little different. I'm going to ask Sister Belinda and Brother Andrew and Brother Donovan. They'll just play, Brother Alvin. And uh, let's just worship the Lord together. Let's get out and mingle with one another. Greet one another. The Lord <coughs> shake hands. And, and women hug the women and men hug the men. And let's just let each other know we're glad that each of us are here today. Amen. <laughs>
of the Lord in every area. Uh, you're giving, you're loving, you're serving, you're being faithful to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, at this time, Sister Hannah and Sister Belinda have a song for us. Amen. Okay. I'm just too eager to testify about this. So, uh, but you know, I think uh, we've been requesting prayer for Sister Jeannie and for her brother, Marty's eyes. Uh, she got hit with a hard ball and got a concussion because he hit it hard, you know. But um, anyway, and they were saying, he said he didn't know if uh, he could fix her eye, you know, hit it again, something get torn and everything. Uh, and then her brother, he had a blood clot in his, it was something different. But, uh, and he didn't think it was going to be able to fix Marty's at all. Well, praise God, God can fix it. Yes, yeah, man.
And so I kind of peeked out the lines to see if their light was on or not. And there was no one in the right in that car, no light there. And it's like, well, I want to see him out in the kitchen window. Well, I want to see him on here. So thank you, Lord. You know, and it was all the hummingbird. But other things, like I couldn't find something, you know, at lunchtime, my supplements, and I couldn't find them again. And so usually I go put my shoes, you know, I have the different shoes. Because I'll wear like the clothes toe shoes because I'm going to inside the church and then I'll carry my sandals and I'll switch to those. But um, anyway, so I was going to go put them in the back closet and I thought, I'm tired. I'm just going to put them down here and I'll put them in there tomorrow. And when I raised up, I saw the some of those marbles, you know, there they were right there. But just different things like that. You know, ESBC, things like that, things, et cetera, et cetera. But he's just, you know, I can just. Almost hear him say, I'm with you. Amen. Yes. And I'm so thankful to God yes. and for his presence and for all of his blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise, honor, and glory. Yes. Amen. 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 Worship the Lord as they minister today. Amen.
Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to be ministering this morning on waiting on the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 27. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. Have you up? Uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Are we there? Say amen. 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 All right, begin reading in verse 27. It says, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. And I added this. Uh, I've been taking notes on this since probably Wednesday night, late Thursday morning, early, something like that. And I added this 27th verse uh, just, just probably a little before 9 this morning. But uh, I don't want that to be the focus. I don't believe that there's anybody here that... Uh, would be uh, playing the hypocrite or thinking that, uh, you know, that our way is hid from the Lord. We, we know that God sees. He knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart and everything. But, uh, uh, and my judgment is passed over from my God. The word there to him is hid means to keep close as though to get away with. In other words, this is just going to slide by. It'll pass. It's going to be okay. That is what I'm thinking that it may be there. I don't uh, like whenever Adam uh, hid himself in the garden. He knew he was in trouble. He knew, he knew, he knew that he wasn't going to get it past God. And God called to him uh, in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where art thou? Right. And he said, I was naked, so I hid myself. And he was, he was hiding himself, not so God couldn't find him. He was hiding himself because he, he just kind of feared to face God. He was hiding himself so that uh, he could put it off a little longer. I'm not sure what was on his heart and mind. And I'm not sure what may be on anybody's heart and mind that may be in a, a state of slumber or in a state of... Uh, uh, trouble or anxiousness that for some reason or other they're not able to take it to God. Uh, but I want you to encourage you today to take it to God. Take it to God. Amen? Amen. Take it to the Lord. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, how many times do we have to take it to the Lord? Seventy times seventy? Amen. in one Or seven times seventy in one day? Right. Amen? How many? Four hundred and ninety times in one day? As many times as it takes until the victory comes. Amen? Alright, verse 28 says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Truly today, teach us, Lord, to wait. Amen? Amen. If there's anything in my life that may be hid from the Lord, that may be hid from me, I, when we was up here leading singing or having singing going on, Sister Hannah was leading singing a while ago, I asked the Lord, God, let me be thoroughly right with you. God, if there's anything in my heart that is not right with you, don't keep it from me. Don't let me be ignorant. Don't let me be a novice spiritually after serving you all these years. But help me to search my heart. Help me to examine my ways to make sure that they're okay between. It's okay between the Lord and me. Amen? Is that your heartbeat? Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you. 
today. We thank you and we do praise you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask you to just overshadow us today. Draw us ever nearer to you, Lord. Help us to see clearly. Help us, Lord, to, to be faithful to you, Lord. I pray, God, that you can do and accomplish through each of us today as pleasing to you and your will, Lord. Not our will, but your will be done. And we'll give you all praise and thanks for it in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated today. Are we waiting upon God? Is there anything in your life that you're waiting upon the Lord for? Uh, this 40th chapter begins with God saying, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Comfort, comfort means to be sorry for, for God's people to be sorry, to have a heart of compassion, if you will, toward God's people. Realizing you've heard that saying over and over again, except for the grace of God, there go I. Until we've walked a while in a person's moccasins, we may not be sure what they're going through. But if we've walked, amen, where they've walked, if we've been through where they've been through, amen, we may understand it a little clearer. I remember Brother Thomas, ever since I was just a little bitty boy, uh, my dad, Brother Persinger, led Brother Thomas to the Lord. And... Uh, uh, Brother Thomas has been faithful all these years. I mean, when Valencia fell out of the two-story window on the concrete slab and Daddy was in Nashville, Brother Thomas said, well, my brother-in-law wouldn't want to take her to the doctor. And so he just took out his pocket knife or razor or something and he shaved her head and, and took a butterfly stitch and cleaned it naturally and everything and disinfected it and put that butterfly stitch on it and she carries that little scar in her head today. Amen. He ain't changing I ate whatever it is but it's never caused her any problem. Amen. It's the last of it but there was faith that was built. There was faith that was spoken to the family and to the kids and when daddy got home and daddy heard about it. Amen. Daddy said well why in this world. Amen. Wouldn't he have taken her and got her stitched up and taken care of and everything? And we were all just taken aback. Brother Persinger, he didn't go to the doctors. I mean, we didn't go to the doctors. Valencia, when, uh, when we were in Pulaski there just a little while later, uh, Valencia had been running 104, 105 degree and got up as high as 106. And uh, she had been in contact with a girl named Cheryl that had gallon uh, uh, a rare blood disease and, and for uh, like two and a half weeks she ran an extremely high fever they had called for the church on three different occasions I think they had prayed for every church service they had worked and ministered and did everything they could to try to help but I want you to know on this day amen daddy broke down and went out to the payphone across from the barber shop and he called the doctor and he said doctor he said will fever really cook a child's brain he said well that depends on how high it is and how long it's been that way he said how high has the fever gotten he said well 105 106 as high as a, maybe even 107 I really don't remember to be honest with you but anyway it was real high and he said well how long he said well for a week and a half or two weeks uh, however long that was he said, man, you mean to tell me you goofed around for a week and a half and two weeks while your, while your daughter lay dying of a fever? He said, well, no, sir. He said, well, what have you been doing? He said, well, I've been praying. We've been praying. He said, you've been what? He said, we've been praying. He said, well, I'll tell you what. You either go back to praying or get that little girl to the emergency room now amen he said thank you doctor for my answer he hung up the phone he went and called for the elders of the church again drove home amen they met together and they prayed together for Valencia and about 30 minutes Valencia was out and you know after a week and a half two weeks of running a high fever not eating hallucinating amen the walls seeing monsters and seeing things and everything she was weak and in 30 minutes Brother, she was out riding the tricycle like she had never been sick. God. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Well, why did God allow that? You say, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got the story mixed up. Here's where Cheryl, the girl with Gauche, comes in. 
they got a call within a day or two of that and said, does y'all church believe in praying for the sick? Do you believe in divine healing? And, and dad answered the phone and he said, yes, we definitely do. And he, he explained about Cheryl and, and daddy went to visit uh, little Cheryl there and, and she was at her grandmother and granddad's and her mom and dad was there. And, and when she saw dad come in, she just began to frantically cry and go crazy weeping. She was terrified. I mean, it had been doctors. They had been transporting her two or three days a week from Lexington to Memphis, uh, that 75 or 80 mile trek, whatever it was, uh, to get shots and to get blood withdrawn and blood put back in and, and doing everything they could to save her life. And she was getting weaker and weaker and weaker by the day. And the Holy Ghost prompted him there in the doorway and said, tell her about Valencia. And he said, you know, he said, I've got a little girl, Valencia, and she's been sick. And he said, when he mentioned Valencia's name, he said, she began to calm right down. And after just a few seconds of him talking or somewhere along the line, the, it was very quiet. And the Holy Ghost said, pray now. And he began to pray for her and God healed her. And we had about probably 25 or 30 new people in church the following Sunday. Amen. Amen. At that time, Tammy didn't know how to play the piano. We didn't have a piano player. And, and a lady by the name of Linda, she was the aunt. She was the, the uh, uh, grandmother's sister, if I'm not mistaken, to this little girl. So God began to work and God began to minister. And God did a healing. And Sister Kim and I and the kids went back about 15 years ago to Lexington. And I want you to know, I'd say probably 75, 80% of the people that was going to church then, amen, as we were living in the 70s and 80s, amen, in, in uh, 72, 73, they're still going to church today. Because God healed a little girl. Because Valencia got sick. Because the pastor prayed and trusted God one more time. Because we tried to do it God's way, even though the devil was trying to beat us up about it, and we felt very insecure about it. Amen. I want you to know you can trust God. Back in chapter 2, it says, Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is accomplished. Be at an end. In other words, be at an end. When your warfare is accomplished, don't mean it's going to end this very second. It means get ready. Victory is here. Victory is on, on the scene. Victory is nigh. Hey, brother, it's about to be here. You fought a good fight. You've come through the wilderness wanderings. You've come through the journey. Amen, brother. You've crossed the Red Sea, so to speak, and you're almost home. But in verse, uh, verse 2 there, it says, For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Prepare me the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Yes. God has a purpose for you going through something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, in Daniel 10 and 1, Daniel was a man that understood the times. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understood understanding of the vision. And I want you to know, when you come to church, if you'll come to church with an expectant heart, not necessarily Amen. Having great confidence upon the flesh. Not necessarily having great confidence, amen, upon the pastor. I wish it would be that you could have confidence on the pastor. I wish it would be that you would have confidence in the pulpit and that God is has prepared something to feed and minister to us. I wish we could have confidence in where we've been and where we felt so recently that God put us here. But when I look out at you guys, I tell you what, I look like a, I'm looking at a lot of scared chickens or something. And I don't know what scared chickens look like, but I want you to know this is not uh, uh, something that we do, amen, as a spectator sport. This is something we do together. Brother Donovan, this is something we do together. Brother Alvin, this is something we do together. Brother Smith, this is something that we do together. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to bite you. I just want to give God's best to you as long as I'm here to do the will of God. I don't necessarily have understanding of the times like Daniel did. 
But I have understanding enough to be faithful. I have understanding enough that, you know, when I, when I seek the Lord and I prepare as best as my ability is to feed and to minister to you, amen, my heartbeat, I don't pick you apart. Amen. I don't, uh, I don't look at you, amen, uh, through disdain or through doubtful eyes or uh, uh, judging you for your sin or your shortcomings or whatever you may be going through. But I have a heart that God would minister to you. Amen. And I want to know He's here. Amen. And I've done my will and my desire to please Him and to prepare the man. I want you to think about, do you ever need comforting? We all do from time to time. How do we get comforted? Amen. God's way. That's the way we get comforted. Oh, you say, well, God's way or my way. The way of the flesh. <clears throat> our way. I want you to know our way is a temporary fix. Our way is not really comfort. It's just putting a band-aid on the problem. Amen. Do you need comforting right now? I want you to know something. I wish to God that you could worship the Lord and help me preach the way I've worshipped the Lord and helped everybody that's ever stood behind this pulpit. I don't try to figure out if they've got the victory. I don't try to try to figure out if they've been coveting, if they've been lusting, if they've been sinning or doing anything wrong. I worship God. When I feel something that would cause me not to worship the Lord together with them, I put it on me. And I say, oh God, give me a heart that helps them to exalt you. I had a man preach a revival for me one time. And uh, this man, I love him. The first time that I ever really felt the anointing when I was evangelizing. I actually wasn't evangelizing yet. I was fixing to start evangelizing the following week. I was at this pastor's church. I just got a job. I went five or six jobs, five or six weeks trying to find a job and couldn't find a job and finally got one and started on Monday and that Thursday I got asked to preach a, a, a revival and I really felt like I needed to preach the revival and uh, I went to my boss the next day and told him that I got asked to preach a revival and would he, if he could let me off I know I didn't have my 90 days in but if he could let me off I would just only have to miss a half of one day, I could take off at noon and he'd be there in time to preach the revival and he just was very adamant. Of course, this man, he left work at 10, 30, 11 in the morning and he would go to the bar and drink and one or two days a week he would not even come back to work at all. He'd been there 25, 28 years and uh, he didn't care about the ministry. But I did and uh, I preached the revival and God opened doors and for the next three and a half years I was a full-time evangelist preaching revivals and helping people and trying to be a blessing. Uh, you know, we must be born again and we must allow God to do things His way. We must. We must do it His way and His time. Said the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know, uh, you know, tomorrow lunch is free, but it's always today. But how many todays does a person have before it's no longer available? How many todays does a person have before opportunity passes them by? Why God's way? Because God's way is the closest that we'll ever get to perfect. God is perfect. And God is as perfect as he can be with us without going against his will and his desire. God does nothing that is not perfect. Right. Amen? Yeah. But the closest that I believe God ever gets to being on the line 
mind is when he's dealing with humanity. Because God loves us so much. He tries to make it as easy for us as possible. But I want you to know, he knows we're just dust. He knows that. But I want you to know God is a just God. God is a perfect God. And God cannot be a loving God without judging sin justly and fairly. Amen? There's only one exception to that, and that's God's grace, the blood. The blood. We don't deserve to get saved, but he said, Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life free. In verse uh, chapter 43 and verse 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, it shall not thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the fire flame kindle upon thee. Amen. What are you talking about? God's got his part, and we got our part. Our part is to trust and obey. Amen. God's part is his way and his time. He provides. He makes it possible for us to get what we need from him. If we can do nothing in and of ourselves apart from God. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you. Some of you may just be sitting back trying to ride the storm waiting to see what's going to happen. I'm telling you we need the body of Christ to get in today and to travail before God to get at the altar, to reach home to the horns of the altar, to plead the blood, to pray that something does happen. Amen. To pray that God's will is accomplished. To pray that we do go. To pray that we're not discouraged. To pray that we're not weary and well doing. To pray that we not listen to the counsel that sounds good to the flesh for a little bit for right now. But in the long run, it may not be the will of God. We want the will of God, don't we? I trust that you want the will of God. I trust that you want the will of God. Amen. Galatians 5 and 7 says, You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. We wait. We fully wait. We wait with joy in God, trusting and resting in Him that He's able to do what He said He can do. He who is the creator of the ends of the earth. Amen. He, he, he scrapes the dust up in a measure, comprehends it in a, in a span. I mean, brother, he does it all right. He does it well. I wish I could flash your minds what they're thinking up here today. And I really do wish nobody but you could read them and you could see how desperately you need the message for today. Why? Because you're not here by accident, but you're here for such a time as this. I have confidence in you, Paul said, through the Lord, that you will be not otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. In other words, if there's anything or anybody that's putting in your head or your heart or your mind an easy way and it escapes the sacrifice, it escapes the cross, it escapes whatever that God bid and ordained for you to go through. You see, God knows whether my concern today is me or whether my concern today is you. God knows. God knows. And I want you to know, some of you, I'm not sure you realize, amen, how much the church means to you for such a time as this. Because it's a dreadful world out there. And when you can go and be in the presence of the Lord, it's a wonderful thing. This persuasion, this waiting upon the Lord, this this commendation from God for us to wait upon him. It cometh not of him that calleth you a little leaven, he says, leaveneth the whole loaf. And he's talking about there in Galatians, God, God is not trying to trouble you. God is trying to minister to you to get you to grow. 
some of you I believe with all of my heart. And all I want is the will of the Lord. That's all I want is the will of the Lord for your lives. Some of you I believe you've gone through the hardest, darkest, most turbulent, trying times the last few years that you're going to go through. But if the devil can get you to throw in the towel, if the devil can get you to Amen. Become of none effect when he needs you to labor. He says you've fallen from grace in the fourth verse if you begin to entertain those things. You see, I have had them pass by my mind as well. But what do you do? You go to the altar and you pray again and you plead the blood and you take it before God and you seek the will of the Lord. Verse 28, let's go ahead and get Back to the message, I believe. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. How many of you believe today that God's big enough and able and powerful enough to minister to us today? Will you let him do so? <clears throat> Will you let him do so today? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. God knows the fruit does not come when you've planted a field while the ground is still frozen. But you have to wait. You have to wait. Have we forgotten the God of heaven is the creator of it all. He spoke it into existence. He telleth the number of the stars. He calls them all by their name. I looked up one commentary said that there's only uh, 80, I believe it was quintillion, whatever. It's a eight with 16 star, 16 zeros behind it. And I went searching for an equivalent to that. But uh, it's a man which is it's a number which is uncomprehendable. One guy said, uh, "You can take eighty medium-sized Bibles with medium print, medium font, whatever he said, and it wouldn't be able to number all the stars. Not eighty." But 80 with 16 zeros, or 8 with 16 zeros behind it. I may not be being clear on that. That's a number that is, that is unimaginable. It's a number that uh, is unbelievable. Amen? Amen? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary. He don't give up. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. When we look to him, he reminds us when we are weak, he is strong. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. We all dash off of the starting line with a flurry of haste. But Moses tried to deliver the Israelites. 40 years too soon when he killed the Egyptian and he had a long trying time to wait before God said that he was ready it's been said nothing tires a person like hopelessness the scripture says hope deferred make the heart sick are you weary are you tired amen what do you need what do you need? Amen. You need prayer. What do you need? You need encouragement. Amen. You need to be comforted. You need to wait upon God. When you go to the Lord and you wait and you wait and you wait and you pray and you, you tarry and it seems like nothing is happening there, but you get back down. Remember I told you just in the last week or two, I had prayed and waited and waited and nothing was happening and then I, I prayed a little bit and felt a little bit of the Lord but then I got through praying and went and studied a little bit and got ready to go back to bed and it was getting close to daylight and I felt like I need to go pray again. wonder what had happened if you just went and prayed again and I went back and prayed again and it was just like old times. Boy, heaven was open. Heaven wasn't brass anymore. Heaven was open. I didn't do anything any different to my knowledge and my knowing that I've been doing for the two and a half hours prior. What are you saying? I'm trying to tell you. God knows what he's doing, but we got to trust him. Yes. 
We got to trust him. Who are we to be waiting upon? Waiting upon the Lord. Amen. Waiting upon the Lord. But they that wait to bind together as by twisting, waiting upon the Lord, the self-existent one. He's bound together and knit with. He's constantly seeking God's face. He's constantly desirous of God fulfilling his plan in his heart for God's will for his life. Amen. Who are we waiting upon? We're waiting upon the Lord. The God who knows when, amen, to show us that he's there. He's there at all times. But he's wanting faith, amen, to reach out and touch him. Feel after him. If happily he says you'll find him because he's not far from any of us. He who flung the stars into existence is there with you today. If we will wait in faith believing and bring our burden to the Lord, that still small voice will soon be heard by us again. Jesus will speak peace and the storm, amen, will diminish again. You say, I've had that happen before, but it's been too many days. It's been too many weeks now, and I'm weary with what? I'm weary with forbearing. That's the way Jeremiah was, amen, with the word of God when it seemed like the people, amen, were not receiving. It seemed like the people were not hungry. It seemed like the people couldn't muster up enough faith for confidence to receive anything from Jeremiah. That's kind of the way I feel today. But the Bible says that Jer Jeremiah was weary with forbearing and he could not stay. Why? Because the word of God was a fire shut up in his bones. We need to get the word of God shut up in our bones. We need to get the spirit of God dealing with our heart to where we realize that God has our best interest at heart. God only wants our best interest at heart. God is wanting to bless you you and help you and use you and accomplish through you something that may be greater, amen, than all the things you've done last year or year before last put together. You may not see it, but God has a plan, but you need to be willing to fight the good fight and stand and be counted, amen, with what God is desiring to do. Waiting upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord prepares the heart of true humility. You must be willing to wait when you don't feel good, when you don't feel God's presence. The greatest assurance that victory is ahead, amen, is when God is having you wait for. He's having you wait for a purpose. He has a plan. Amen. He washes our heart free from the pride when we wait. Amen. We realize when the want to give up is there. We realize when the fear is there. We realize why it is there. We realize, amen, we say, well, I don't want to watch this one suffer. Or I don't want to watch this one suffer. And we go to God in prayer and we realize we don't want to suffer ourselves. We're tired and we're weary. Amen. And we don't feel like fighting any longer. Brother, I'm going to tell you every time as you get older, you come to the house of God. It was nice. Amen. When we could take and take off with a sprint. When we first started this race, Brother, I was 24 and three and a half months when I got saved. Amen. Or two and a half months. Amen. And God had put such a zeal within me. I wanted to go everywhere and tell everybody about the love of God. I wanted to set the world on on fire for Jesus. I wanted to do all that and be different. Amen. But brother, today, amen, a lot of times it takes more energy just to go back to that office and wait again and tarry again and pray again. Amen. As it did, it could be in the, the, the absence of God's presence when heaven was brass for days and days and days. What are you saying? I don't have the answer. Right. But I've got to hold to the man that is the book. The Word was made flesh and He dwelt among us. I'm telling you, some of us against counsel chose to do our way, to go our way, to do it the way we wanted. I know. I know. You don't need to do this. I know. But you chose to do it. Amen. I was praying this week and there was a decision that was made in our family. 
And I told some of our, I told one of our sons, he can't come down here and just just tell how everything's going to be and stuff. I mean, we got to we got to try to keep peace and we got to try to have harmony and we got to try to lead these to the Lord that need the Lord and everything. And, and when I was praying this week, God showed me, and it's been two, two and a half years ago, but God showed me in the principle that he was standing on, he was right. I was not wanting compromise. I was wanting peace. But peace would have been a compromise for the conviction of his heart. Do you see what I'm saying? Come on, that's right. It didn't really bother me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to hurt this one that had been out in sin. I didn't want to hurt that one that had a turbulent storm in their life and a home that was in trouble. I want you to know when I'm not wanting to hurt be it even ourselves. I don't want to have to go through it any longer. I'm tired of the battle. I'm tired of the fight. Don't jump ship. Don't jump, don't jump ship. You may say, well, I don't have to keep dealing with this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Look out. You need to wait upon the Lord till you get the mind of the Spirit. Brother Thomas said for years, wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord till you are meek and lowly and feel his presence, his guidance, and his direction. Then make your decisions. And they said, he said, then live trying to fulfill the decisions that you made while you were in the presence of God. And some of you have been in the presence of God, but you've not been in the presence of God in a while. Not the way you want it to be. Not the way you need to be. In a yielded way. In a way to where you will let God accomplish His will. In a way to where whatever's on your heart and mind, whatever you may be going through right now, what comes to your mind to the surface, surface, let God wipe it off as dross when you're in the fire. Let God wipe it off. Don't, a change is not necessarily always the answer. Sometimes a change of heart Amen. is the answer. Amen. Amen. We need to look out and be faithful, searching for the heart and the mind of God. David, when he was on the backside of the pastor, when he was fighting rejection and ridicule, when his brothers basically looked at him as pretty well nothing, God was preparing him. Most people say God was preparing him for Goliath, and I've even made that statement probably myself. But God was preparing him for something bigger than Goliath. God was preparing him to be a king in Israel. But God was preparing to pre prepare him to be a man after God's own heart. A man that even after his shortcomings, even after his failures and falling short, God would look at him and say he has the heart of a king, a man after God's own heart. He first had to pray when Nathan the prophet came to him there and said, Thou art the man. He said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. We need to say that sometimes. We need to ask God to be merciful. Lord, don't show me what I want to see, but God, show me what I need to see. Amen. Show me what you want me to see, Lord. Amen. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And let me say there, I wouldn't have wronged any in my family for anything. 
for the decision that I was making in talking to my son. I wouldn't have had him compromised for anything. I just didn't see any harm in what the family was wanting to do. What's wrong? What's wrong? You need to let the Lord tell you what's wrong. Some things God hates. I had, uh, I had a preacher when I was evangelizing before Sister Kim come along and I prayed every single day probably several times a day for God to send me a godly Holy Ghost filled companion and uh, I had a preacher show me one day in the Bible and he was a very precious sincere man that loved me we had a great revival you know I mean I could see him and his wife you know they're precious but he tried to convince me then, and I wasn't even studying, you know what I mean, worrying about that. I didn't have anybody on the line. I didn't have anybody in mind. I was praying about it. But he told me that if I got married again, I would get a wound and dishonor. Maybe a blot. But I'm telling you, I had gone over with my dad those scriptures, or dad had gone over those scriptures with me over and over and over again. If they flee, such a one is not in bondage. And we'd look it up in the Greek, and we'd look this up, and we'd read over this, and we'd read over that. But let me tell you, God hates divorce. Do you hear what I'm saying? God hates divorce. God wants God's best for you. And you don't know but what God's best is just before you. And the very things that you prayed and prayed and prayed about and began to feel so weary today. Our church is so far down, will it ever be up again? Our people are so weak, will they ever come to church with courage enough to muster up, to trust the Lord and praise the Lord and believe the Lord to do it again? I remember times in the last year, a year and a half, when we would come together. Boy, and I tell you what, God would so manifest himself around these altars. We were struggling. We were fighting the devil. But we were together and we had peace and we were walking with God in unison. And God met your need. God gave you just what you needed. He gave you victory in spite of the storm. Verse 6 says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and then the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Let me tell you, when you're wounded, when you're broken, you can't smile. You can't be jubilant and excited and share the good times of God. Because it's like you can't reach them anymore. You can't get a hold of them anymore. But I'm telling you, he's not far. He's not far away from any of us. Amen. Remember that preacher told me, next time you get down to pray, just say a cuss word. I looked at him like he had lost his mind. He said, oh, he said, you wouldn't do that for anything, would you? He said, you mean to tell me the God that created you, that loved you, that went to Calvary for you, he's going to hear you in your weakness, and he's not going to hear you in your praise and your love and your rejoicing and your crying out to him for help. I don't remember what all he said, but that's the gist of what I got from it. And brother, it helped me. I've never said a cuss word at the altar. Amen? But it proved a point. Verse 10. Hey, well, let me go back to uh, <clears throat> verse 7. It says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O 
God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Do you wish you had the joy of your salvation back today? It's available. It's available. All you got to do is cast your cares upon him. All you got to do is give him the trial, the problem, the trouble, and see what God will do with it. Amen. Amen. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Amen? Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Colon. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. It was said of David, whenever David contended with the forces of nature and with the man, David was victorious. But when David began to contend with the powers of his own ungodly desires, he was powerless. you got to let God help you with the things you're powerless with. The way you let God help you is keep on praying. Keep on seeking. Keep on loving. Keep on reading the word. Keep on believing. Keep on going back. God, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to know God, amen, can make you whole today. God can heal us today. God can help us today, but we've got to want it and we've got to let him. And he's not going to force us. But I'm telling you, by God healing us, what will, what was, what's in it for me if I let God heal me? Well, the number one thing that's in it for you, if you'll let God heal you and let God give you back that peace and joy and love in the Holy Ghost, God will prevent you from making a mistake. Do you hear what I'm saying? God don't want you to act out of turn. God don't want you to act out of will. God don't want you to act out of feelings. God don't want you to act out of emotions. God wants you to flow with His Spirit Amen. and be led by Him. Like I told you Wednesday night, you get shut in with God in a secret place and get everything really prayed through the way it needs to be. And then when God gives you guidance and direction, you'll be safe in walking in that direction. Amen? Amen. Amen. But when you're uncertain, your uncertainty may be being discerned and being read by the one that really needs somebody to be certain. Amen. And I want to be certain. I want to be faithful. But I want you to know I want you to be certain and faithful too. Amen. Amen. Because you're the church. You're the church that God's looking to build on. Amen. Amen. All right. Would you stand this morning? You know what? It's about 14 minutes till we we come away and let God minister to us. Ask God to bring to fruition the message today in our hearts that we can trust and rest in God to do what's needed in each of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.